Strangulation, knife wounds. Subdural hematomas are severe enough to make me think that she was unconscious when he strangled her. Less bus, less muscle. You know, from the lack of ligature marks or defensive wounds, I'd guess the fun started once she was out cold. How do you guys get this sick? I think it has something to do with mom. Anyway, this guy had a way with a knife. Wounds are limited to the victim's press. Some kind of weird pattern. You don't see that every day. So I let my fingers do the walking. Brooklyn, five years back. Girl disappears without a trace on her way home from the library. Her body's dumped, bludgeoned, raped, strangled. And slashed. Yeah, the slash marks on Sally Gallon's breasts and those on the Brooklyn girl are close. How close? Close enough for a maybe. Lab's running DNA on the semen samples. I'll let you know. Thanks. Five years separation. Not exactly son of Sam or Zodiac. Maybe he was out of town. Well, maybe we just haven't found the bodies. You know how many teenage girls go missing? The guy the gallon girl spent the weekend with? A real sweetheart. Yeah, with a real alibi. Well, I'll set you up with this detective Goldstein who worked the Brooklyn girl. Meanwhile, let's not press the public panic button just yet. You ever have one that won't go away? More than one. Sorry to hear that. Holly Pinkston was mine. 18, pretty as a picture, straight A's. She left the stacks with an armload of books about Napoleon. Ran into a girlfriend, yak about this and that, head home, that's it. So there was no ransom call? Nothing. Not until a couple of Alkies prowling an abandoned warehouse in Red Hook found her body. Cut, beaten, raped, and strangled. Librarian said there was this guy in the stacks at the European History Department around the same time. Department artist made a sketch none of the bookworms could ever place him. And you never found the guy? Yeah, I didn't even know if we were looking for a suspect or a witness. Hey, we're gonna need a copy of that sketch. Yeah, that's him. Who? He sat right there Sunday night. And Sally Gallon and her tattooed friend were where? Right here. Is he the one who... Did he talk to Sally? Barely talked to me, just shot in a beer. You know, he was kind of creepy. Creepy? How? I don't know. I work in a bar. Guys flirt with me, especially guys by themselves. This one just stared. That Sally? Kind of like at nothing. I told him I'd run him a tab. Most customers jump at that, but this guy wanted to pay as he went. That makes for a quick exit. He pulled out a roll. Must have been like three inches thick. Looked like all ones and fives. You know, when Kurt got back to the empty table after your girl left because of the fight, this guy was gone too. Sure. He wanted to give her his shoulder to cry on. Did you show this to Sally Gallant's parents? And they never saw him before. Neither did her friends, people in the building, or at school. So we're back to random. Looks like the only issue is how many. Missing persons put this together for us. The blue pins are the known homicide victims, Sally Gallant, Holly Pinkston. The red ones are missing girls who fit the M.O. Yeah, teens who vanished in plain view. No prior history as runaways, no ransom demands, no credit card activity. We're looking at five boroughs in Westchester County. Blondes, brunettes, Asians, blacks. I'm not seeing a pattern here. In all honesty, neither are we. Well, someone's got to know this guy. So start with the Manhattan pens, work your way to the bridges. Joe's walking home from practice. Music? Basketball. She's a pretty good two guard. He actually recruited her to play at Marbury Prep. I don't harbor any illusions. I know Sophie's dead. My mother and father know, too. They never could have left the city if they had any hope. The hardest thing about it is imagining what some freak did to her. Have you seen anyone who looks like this? I'm sorry. You OK? Yeah. I'm all right. It just came back all of a sudden. I'm sorry, man. No, I know you're trying to help. I'm just going to sit here for a while. I'll call you if. Marbury Prep's on the Upper East Side, right? Yeah, 83rd and 2nd. It's a long walk here, especially after hoops practice. Now, Bobo's bar is across town from Gallon's apartment. The library's got to be two miles from the Pinkston girls' place. And the flute player disappeared, what, 50 blocks from home? So 
So, unless all these girls were training for the marathon, a cabbie would hit all the boroughs. And a cabbie would have a large wad of small bills. Damn. 25,000 hacks in this town. How come I can never get a cab? Complaints are third floor. By the way, that number doesn't include livery and vans. You sound like a glass half empty kind of guy. I'm just giving it the stats. The guy we're looking for is white, mid 40s, native born. Why do you say so? You eliminate the Africans and the English as a second language group, the number goes down to 1,500. What about guys that just got their hack license five years ago? I'd have to ask Mr. Computer. Well, why don't you do that? The past two years, I quit the life. Yeah. Paris Hilton begged me to stay at her place in the Hamptons. How could I say no? Man, cut the crap. It hurts, OK? Because the idiot brother-in-law told me the future's in popcorn. What's wrong with popcorn? Uh, nothing. At a movie, you know, he wants to start stores, you know, like Starbucks. Charge a lot, he says. The morons will eat it up like it's... Like popcorn? Exactly. So I mortgage the house, quit the job, we open up one store and never get out from under. And after all this, the wife calls me a bum, takes everything I got left. All right. You want to tell me where you were Sunday night? Right here. Minus the paycheck, because the commissar there gave me a vehicle to look start. Is that right, Chief? Nothing wrong with that vehicle. He flooded the engine, Cossack. All right, if somebody doesn't give me a straight answer, I'm going to lock everybody up. He was here. We're talking to all the cabbies, Mr. Bruner. Where were you Sunday night? I asked you a question, Mr. Bruner. Mr. Bruner, you're going to have to tell us where you were on the night of the 23rd. 23rd? That was a Sunday. Good. Now that we've synchronized our calendars, where were you? Here. Anybody visit you, Mr. Bruner? Here? Yes. Here. No. Any phone calls? No phone. No TV, either. So how'd you spend the evening? What do you mean? The way you read a book, you do a crossword puzzle? No. So you just sat here by yourself in the dark? Why would I sit in the dark? You want some cheese? Put it down. Pagoda. Drop it. You know, I'd feel a whole lot more comfortable if we talked somewhere where there weren't any sharp objects. <laughs> 